So, Leonard, there's this thing called AI. I think you've heard of it. What's that? Yeah, right. Um, how's it, how's that, uh, how's the AI revolution going? At the moment, I think um, the AI revolution is still um, yet to be realized. Um, we're selling a lot of GPUs, we're building out a lot of infrastructure, right? Mm. A lot of investment going into the hardware. Um, as far as the AI, which in my view is, are the, you know, the, the applications, right? The things that are gonna be delivering value. Um, that's still a question. Obviously on the consumer side, there's a lot of interest, engagement, but um, in terms of monetization and on the enterprise side especially, that I think is still so a somewhat opaque. thing. Yeah, yeah. nascent. So nascent is a good word yeah, for it. So it, we're much. hoping that it's going to be more used for more than customer service and chatbots and uh, replacing Google search, obviously. But you, I guess your point yeah. is that it's not quite clear what the color and the shape of these applications are going to be. And, and right. yeah, and where does yeah. the uh, where do the humans end up? Do they end up? Yeah. Out of out of a job from all of this. <laughs> well, I think there's gonna there's going to have to be a lot of effort to make that a reality because I mean let's think about it. You know, in a lot of these hypotheses about uh, you know productivity uplift and job replacement require a probabilistic technology to do quite a bit of deterministic things, right? And uh, when you look at what's happening with agentic AI, I mean, that's exactly what you're trying to do, right? You're trying to isolate what is a general purpose, largely thought of as a general purpose technology to do task specific things. And then what ends up happening is that you end up narrowing the uh, capability actually, and the scope of what that uh, probabilistic technology does, right? So that it can be deterministic. And so that's a little bit of the irony of what's happening with, uh, as everyone's kind of tinkering around with uh, agentic AI frameworks, as well as, you know, graduating, let's say, from their discovery process with large language models. And um, I think we're gonna continue to see this learning, but that's that, that ironic dynamic that you can observe out there. And I think it comes down in part to the fact that people are conflating artificial intelligence with human intelligence, and they're very different yeah. things, aren't they? So uh, right. they're not necessarily a one-to-one -one replacement. Uh, they're not, they're right. not equal values in the, equa in the yeah, equation. Yeah, and then there's societal intelligence, right, versus yeah. collective, let's say, whatever this notion of a super AI mm. is as well. So. I mean, I, I, I think that's probably less important for the telco industry or any industry for that matter. I mean, what's really important is how do you channel these technologies into something that enhances value, you know, and uh, justifies or supports this thesis around productivity improvement or exponential X, Y, Z, right? Right. And um, I don't think we've seen that happen yet. What about the issue of hallucinations? Now, what we're doing now is with the introduction of RAG, compound AI, architectures, you're seeing the paring down of and isolation of what, uh, you know, these models can do to reduce hallucinations either by feeding it context or just limiting, uh, you know, applying guardrails into what can be, uh, what can be prompted and uh, what can be output, right? And so these are all controls that you're trying to apply to uh, this uh, technology that will hallucinate, mm. right? Yeah, but it's still going to hallucinate. We have the AI sort of layer, and then underneath that we have a network layer, and the network layer isn't fit for purpose to carry AI traffic at the moment. Uh, it's not quite clear how the carriers are going to pay to upgrade it to carry somebody else's traffic, which they're not making money from. And then underneath that we don't have a a power infrastructure in North America, which can we don't have a grid that can support AI. And now you know, Leonard, you come here and yeah. you're telling me that we're not really sure about the applications which sit on top of it. I mean, it's almost a sort of layer cake of uh, potential disillusionment coming at us. <laughs> Do you think we're heading for a big, uh, a, a big trough of disillusionment moment with well, AI? Sounds yeah. like we might be. Uh, well, we have to remember, you know, in terms of investment, 
what, what was the prime motivation, especially for a lot of the hyperscalers? It's basically, admittedly, um, FOMO, right? right? Fear of missing out and being left behind. And, uh, and I think we're still in that modality because the technology continues to pivot, but you're seeing these pivots, right? Going from MOEs or mixture of experts in these more agentic forms of um, models, what the reasoning models are, large reasoning models, and it, it's still going to be a um, FOMO, sustained FOMO type of dynamic that I think we're going to see as this uh, Uber, we'll... Uber hype cycle plays out. <laughs>